Good morning and welcome. My name is Pastor Lance Smith and I'm here at Zwingli UCC in Monticello and welcome to today's video worship service. Uh, we're going to kind of go back in time just a little bit. We're going back to school again today. So uh, we welcome you to be with us today. Uh, so glad to have you with us on this Sabbath morning. I'd like for you to keep all the people that are suffering from COVID-19 in your prayers today. All those that have lost things, employment and family members and just all kinds of things that have gone wrong because of COVID. Let's keep those people in our thoughts and prayers, as well as the people that are fighting it on the front lines, the medical staff, and those people that are researching a new vaccine for us. May their efforts be speedy, and may we get some relief from this, this scourge. I'd like to remind you that there's a Thanksgiving service this Wednesday evening. You can pick up, uh, you, can, you can check out our video. It'll be available after 7 p.m. on Thanksgiving Eve. That would be November 25th. So be sure and check that out on the YouTube channel, on Facebook, on our website. You'll be able to find it. So I'd like to greet you with the phrase we greet each other with every Sunday morning. The Lord is with you. Know that the Holy One is God. We are God's people. Worship the Holy One with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Make a joyful noise. For God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship with thanks and joy. Let us praise God in song and word and prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we long to know you better. Open us to recognize your presence, to receive you fully, and to be ready to follow your leading. Amen. Today's scripture is from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from his goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you as a stranger 
and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that I saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishments, but the righteous into eternal life. Today I'd like to take a trip back in time, back back to school. And I was remembering back when I was in high school. Although when I was there, I thought like I was in prison. It felt like I was in prison, but actually life was really, really good back then. I didn't have too many worries or too many cares. And I pretty much got to do whatever I wanted to. And I grasshoppered around and gallivanted around, as my grandfather would say, until about the fifth week of the grading period. And then maybe the teacher would pull me aside and say, you realize what your grade average is? And I'd look and all these homework assignments would be missing. and All these in-school class assignments would be missing. The tests would be pretty good, but the rest of it wasn't, wasn't even there. And if I was lucky, she'd pull me aside or he would pull me aside and talk to me. But more often than not, my mom or my parents got a call telling them where I stood. And then business picked up. After that, for that last week of the six weeks, I would come unwound and scrambling and, and running all over the place, trying to do what I could to get my grades up to at least a C or a B because I was never supposed to fail or even get a D. Um, any of that kind of stuff meant a certain, um, certain amount, there'd be less and less extracurricular activities, so to speak. In other words, anything fun would have been gone for the rest of the six weeks and maybe the next six weeks until my grade level got back up. It's interesting. It's interesting. Today, Jesus is talking about looking back at report cards. As in the day we look at the report cards for life. This story that Jesus is telling us is a culmination of all the parables from chapter 25 of Matthew. First, they had, you had to be prepared. It was the ten virgins and the prepared virgins and the ones that had plenty of oil and the ones that weren't prepared. And The master came and they weren't ready. And then it was the slave who was too frightened to use all the things, that, the gifts that God had made him, to gave him to to better the kingdom. He was too afraid to invest, so he buried his gifts. And today we see Jesus sitting on the throne, and he only has one thing to say to us. What have you been doing? This parable is not, to, not one to say that we have to take care of everyone because they might be Christ. Or to get to heaven, you have to give charity to others. It's not some apocalyptic symbol about the end of time, what's going to happen. It's only asking us, what have you done? Jesus is sitting on the throne as a, the shepherd or the symbol of the king, uh, the sign of the leadership, that kingship, that symbol that came down from the King David, King David, who was also a shepherd. What have you done to further this kingdom? Jesus is asking. Is this something you say that you belong to? Or is it something that you actually live? The kingdom of God. Jesus is displaying once again his upside down view of the hierarchy of society. Who's important in the world to the Christ? The hungry, the sick, the blind, the outcast, and each and every healing. He has done something to heal them something to bring them back into the flock. 
Now in our parable, he's taking out the report card and going over what's important in the new kingdom. And he and his disciples, the kingdom that they're dis ushering in. Hmm, I can see him going over the grades. Clothing the naked, let me see. Hmm, C minus. Drink for the thirsty. Hmm, let me see. That Well, that's a B. Uh, visiting a prisoner. Whoop, incomplete. Feeding the hungry. Hmm, B minus. Welcoming a stranger. Hmm, you kind of get the idea. This is where it's going. When the teacher would show my, me my grades and in school at, at the fifth week, I would come unwound. I would work my tail off to bring in the late assignments and beg the teacher to give me some, some kind of a grade, even though they didn't have to. By rights, they, they didn't have to do anything except document what I did. But I would turn on my baby calf brown eyes to them and play the penitent sinner, and they would cut me some slack. Most times, my, to my, much to my demise, they would give me full credit for those late assignments. I guess my teachers were more interested in my success than I was. They cared much more for my future as well as my current state than I did. The last week of the grading period, I would dig in. Fortunately, I had a great memory and could do well on tests and regurgitate lots of facts and figures that had been presented to me. I also, as you know, were quite, was quite verbose. So if there were essay questions and they were graded on weight, I usually did pretty well because I said a lot of stuff, not really meaning anything. But, you know, we won't have any extra time when Jesus shows us our report card. We're not going to have another week to make things right. And even though Jesus is loving and forgiving, we cannot go back and pick up, pick up those opportunities to serve the kingdom that we might have walked by or never even noticed. There's a story about a piano tuner, and his name was Opernockety. And Opernockety came, and he tuned this lady's piano. And when he left, she had one key that was out of tune. So she called him. She says, one of my piano keys is not in tune. And he says, I'm sorry, ma'am, but Opernockety only tunes once. I couldn't resist telling that story because it just kind of fits in here. But, but you get the gist. Opportunity only knocks one time. There's only one chance. And Jesus is always time. There's all the, all, all the time there's opportunities to serve the Christ. There's opportunities to be kind, to show love, to care for others. To live outside of oneself, so to speak. How many times have you been invited to do something for the kingdom and declined them? But each individual is not only one who has to stand up on the grade card day. Our nations have to stand up as well. Most of the kings in the Bible, you know, you read the Old Testament about these kings that, that failed and were overrun by this alien force or what have you is because they weren't living up to the standard that, that God was putting forth. You know, the people asked for a human king. They weren't satisfied with a God king that showed justice, mercy, and love. So God's kind of holding them to the same standards that he, was, that he was doing. And very few of them, you know, fit the bill. I guess some of the questions that we need to ask are, you know, well, what have we done to bring more people into a just world? Are there people that are hungry? Are there people that need clothes? Have you welcomed the stranger at your gates? It's interesting. In 1978, I graduated from high school and enrolled in a local community college. A fast track to an industrial job. I thought I'd get a fine job, quick job, make some good money, settle down. Everything would be fine. I remember my first year, I barely made it to spring quarter and finally realized that the steady habits that I'd developed in high school weren't going to cut it at the college level. They just weren't going to work. Those teachers weren't going to wait on me. Those teachers weren't going to tell me that I was failing. And those teachers sure weren't going to wait till I turned something in late. So to heal me from all my procrastinating ways, 
I had to spend eight, eight years in the oil field and two more in a pipeline. And I can remember one hot summer J July day busting concrete with an 85 pound jackhammer and I realized what the term weeping and gnashing of teeth really meant. It's interesting. And I returned to college the next, the second time. I, I took on a new regime. I, I realized that I had to really bear down and really had to do something. It was up to me. So I became the Larry the Cable Guy of the college class. Get her done! And I was out there just working my tail off. I was also the teacher's pet. Anything the teacher wanted or needed, I was ready to go. And I always got it done. And I always set my sights on something earlier. If the deadline was on the 15th, I'd had set my day deadline on the 7th. So I'd have plenty of time to get it done. This entire chapter of Matthew is about turning around your perception of righteous living. Be ready. Invest fully. Seek out opportunities to serve. For serving is the path that Jesus set forth. In Matthew 20, 28, he says, Jesus says, I come not to be served, but to serve. This is the core of the kingdom of God. The paradigm or lifestyle of what it means to follow the Christ. The path of God is not to be, not to be on the lookout for ways to serve. It's not like a scavenger hunt where you have a list of, well, I, I help the poor here and, and I clothe the, clothe the naked here. I plan to visit jail tomorrow. It's a lifestyle, a way of thinking, a way of living out your life, a lifestyle of service. It permits your whole entire being to be a servant of the kingdom. The way Christ is, is the way of Christ is what you're doing along the way. We need not keep score. We need not only be aware of our actions in the world. I guess since Christ will only ask us once, we should be asking ourselves each day, what have I done? What have I done today to promote the kingdom of Christ? Is my life a life that thinks of others before myself? Am I a giving person? What, who have I invested in today? Fellow students and teachers, may we see the path to becoming a self-starter. May God continue to bless us with opportunities to serve our fellow humans and all of creation. And may he give us the wisdom and the insight to use our gifts to help others and therefore glorify his kingdom. We still can make our teacher proud and live the joyous life of service. Remember they say it's, it's better to give than receive? I'd like to amend that. I say we've only received until we give. Amen.
Jesus said, wherever two or more are gathered, there he will be also. Let us just take some time to be with the Christ. O Holy One, we come today to recognize you as the King. This is Christ the King Sunday. We recognize you as our leader. And wherever you lead, we should be following if you are truly our leader. Help us to take your ideals and your concepts and the paradigm of living a Christ-like life to heart, Lord. Help us to think of all the things that we do and the ways that we interact with our fellow humans and with creation. Help us to understand that that's a, that's a lifestyle. It's not just a checklist of things that we do and don't do. Help us to see the heaven that's in this world by bringing about a kingdom where everyone feels loved where everyone has purpose, where everyone has a place. Lord, help us to look at our grades, not as accomplishments, but as an indicator of how well we serve the kingdom. Help us to think about our lives. What have we done, Lord? Let us realize what we have done both good and both bad. And help us to build the kingdom, Lord. Help us to use those blocks of all the things that we've done. And help us to accomplish the things that we haven't done yet. To bring about your loving, loving kingdom here on this earth. We ask this in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my friends, as we leave this place, let us be ever mindful that, that we are here to serve, to serve others. And in that serving, we will find true joy. <laughs>